everybody and welcome back to Mooty Plays Pokemon Crystal Version. Today we are going to finish off tackling the rockets within their mahogany base. Last time we got a couple of passwords to open up this door, so we are going to use them to be forced into a boss fight where we are going to end up getting the password to the generator room. Ah, so it seems their plan is to draw out their leader, eh? Hmm, I wonder, how are they going to do that? Eh? Aw, oh, cute little Zilbat. That should have evolved by now. I'm gonna ignore its level and just focus on the cuteness. Cause the adorable little ears and all no for talk it out. Oh man, I can't run down it as long. And next up is his coffin. Coughing, not coffin. <laughs> this is Gen Two, but um, cuff. Cofagrigus has not been invented yet. <laughs> you can't send out coffins at us. And uh interesting little thing about uh, newer Pokemon games is that um well not just newer Pokemon games, newer things that come from Nintendo is that uh they have this word filter on their things where you can't name your people after words that might be offensive. Uh, and uh, one great example of that backfiring is the Pokemon Cofagrigus. Yes, I am pronouncing it that way on purpose. If you spell it out, it has the word F-A-G in it. And that's a bit of a slur these days. So, uh, because of Nintendo's own word filter, that Pokemon cannot be offered, uh, through online trade. <laughs> and, uh, it's a bit annoying that I can't name my Pokemon curse words anymore, but eh. Alright, now that we've defeated that executive, we go and talk to this Murkrow to find out the password. Don't know how Murkrow can speak perfect English. I should have waited a couple gens to have uh, Chatot available to have that make more sense. And even in the remakes, they didn't make it a Chatot because, well, it had to be a Murkrow because this is Gen 2. Murkrow was invented in Gen 2. Eh. But a uh, bit of a difference between the remakes and this version is that. Uh, in the remakes, you have to chase the Murkrow around a little bit before it even gives you the password. Here, you just talk to it. And now we have entered the password and step up into the generator. Fuck. Ah. Of course, it can't be that easy. And it seems that. Oh. Hmm. I am just a little... I'm not used to people using words like baby or honey on people that aren't their lovers, so to say. So it's a bit odd, especially when in this context where the villain is calling you that. <laughs> but uh, I do have a friend that does it, so I'm getting more used to it, at least. And this is an Arbok! It evolves from Ekans at level 22. It is the same type, so its weaknesses stay precisely the same. And oh my gosh, it's actually at a proper level! Yay! I love this executive. Oh, and a bit of a neat little thing. Uh, hmm, not sure if there's enough of a comparison that could be drawn. Uh, in this version, considering that uh, the graphics are a bit less capable of detail, so 
could be that the lack of detail makes it a bit more difficult to tell things apart, but uh, in the remakes, uh, this executive's hair is styled precisely the same way as your rival's hair, which is a bit of an interesting tidbit, especially if you um, if you were able to get a certain little event Pokemon, Celebi, and uh, triggered the event. Which, uh... Oh! Murkrow! Uh, a dark flying type, so it is weak to electric, ice, and rock attacks. Hmm. One thing that makes me sad these days is that... In earlier generations, most of the time when you got an event Pokemon, you got the thing that would trigger the event. Where you could catch that Pokemon. And so you could nickname the event Pokemon whatever you wanted it to be. These days, you're just handed the Pokemon, and the Pokemon triggers an event. Which is... Bleh. Oh, I kind of looked at the pop filter doing that. You. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I really like being able to nickname my Pokemon, so it's, it's kind of, it makes me sad face that they're not letting us name the event Pokemon anymore. I want to name my Shaman Bushel, because it's a little walking bush with a flower coming out of its ear. You do team. I want to name it Bushel. <sighs> oh, which by the way reminds me, uh, in Gen 4 Beyond, uh, legendary Pokemon don't evolve. They change forms. And they can change back to the previous form whenever they want. An especially egregious example of this is Shaman, who changes shape and cry when you get it to change its forms. <laughs> hmm. Bit of a thing I nitpick. I, I don't mind it. It's just a bit of a nitpick to me. Uh, and the way I worded it should uh, say why. But uh, here, our mission is to defeat these three Electrode. And uh, one thing I like to do, I like to try to at least capture one of the electrodes here because my thought process is that if I catch one of the, the electrode, they won't be able to use that electrode again, so they can't start the generator back up if something should happen. Now, at the time I was recording this, I was a bit too lazy to restart the game, so I could, so, which, because it'd mean I'd have to stop and start the recording again. So, I failed on that one, and I failed on the other two, and I completely and totally failed to capture any of the Electro. Rawr. But it is cat. it is possible to catch an Electrode, uh, the game will let you throw Pokeballs at it in both this version and the remake. So, uh, and now that we're done, Lance congratulates us, and, uh, on the behalf of all Pokemon, what are you? Poke Jesus or something? Whoa, that is HM6 Whirlpool. Uh, not too much use, but, uh,. It, uh, certainly, uh, will be useful for something later. Wait, 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 wait. I think there is precisely one whirlpool that you need that HM to get past. Though we're not going to encounter it till either part 39 or 40. I'm gonna lean towards 39. And that's a little teleport pad to get you out of the place quicker. And now that we're done with the Team Rocket Base, 
time to heal up and uh, explore the Lake of Rage because the Lake of Rage has a couple new trainers for us to um, fight. Well, three new trainers. First up is a fisherman who specializes in Magikarp. Yay! Magikarp when I've got six badges. Woo! Oh look, it's an overleveled Magikarp, so it should totally be a Gyarados right now and be a lot more of a challenge. But no, this game does not like challenging us. Boo! <laughs> As much as I bring it up, I, I'm just joking. I, I don't mind it that much. It's, <laughs> but it is the one thing that drags it down the most, in my opinion, out of all the generations, even in the remakes. And yes, even when the remakes have the Pokemon following after you, if it's the first in your party, I don't care. I want to challenge in my Pokemon games. Just because it's for kids doesn't mean you can't give us a fair fight, you know? Or at least a fight with actual challenge. Okay, now, chitting up about that. Uh, shh. I need to stop. Now that, son of a bitch, uh, now that, uh, we've encountered a, the free shiny that the game gives you, uh, I think I'll talk a little bit about, uh, my previous encounters with shinies, and, uh, one of the reasons that Zubat has elevated itself to my favorite is that uh, Zubat was the first shiny that I ever got. Uh, I got it way back in um, way back in Pokemon Crystal and uh, it was a different color and I was like huh I'm gonna catch this thing and, uh... Hi, TK Muti! How are you? I found a useful item shopping, so I bought it with your money. Sorry, it's in your PC. You'll like it. Okay, Mom. But, uh... And, uh, at that time, uh... I had shifted from... liking pink as my favorite color to liking blue. And, uh, I was being all stubborn about it. Blue was better than pink, uh, because, uh, well, I first shifted opinions on my favorite color because, uh, I had, I got this set of gel pens, and, uh, up to that point, I decided that pink was my favorite color probably because uh, my mom was pushing it on me and it's her favorite color because uh, she wore a pink dress once and uh, she got a lot of compliments in it and uh, so I got the set of gel pens and uh, I was using them and looking at it the blue one was just prettier than the pink one so I shifted my opinion to blue being my favorite color, but, uh, I suppose, uh, catching that shiny Zubat and evolving it all the way into a Crobat was, uh, one of the things that got me to start not- to start being less adamant about rejecting pink, because if you don't- if you didn't know, shiny crowbats are pink. They're pink. And uh, 
Ugh. Yep, you missed the red Gyarados. Too bad, so sad. <laughs> and so that was my first shiny. Um, when did I get my next one? Um, I want to say that my next shiny was a uh, Growlithe. Um, I don't recall getting a shiny in Gen 3. I don't think I played Gen 3 that enough to get a shiny from it. But uh, I was making Pokemon eggs and uh, I forget why, but for some reason I wanted a girl Growlithe. And uh, while I was making the eggs, a yellow one came out and... Uh, I was just so amazed that I got a shiny, at that point I actually knew what a shiny was better, that uh, I named it Sparkles with hearts on either end of its name. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh. But uh, the next shiny I got was an Elekid, but uh, I traded that one away for a Jirachi. Nine Tails! It, it evolves from Vulpix with a Firestone. Its typing stay the same, so its weaknesses stay the same. And, uh, I kind of regret trading away that uh, shiny L kid because, like, almost immediately after I got the Jirachi, Nintendo went and did an event to give out Jirachi. So it's what. So it was like, well, I'm not getting that L kid back. And I am running out of footage to talk over, so I will see you guys next time where we shall take on the Mahogany Gym. See you guys then!